Hey, if you wish to see videos early, consider becoming a member on our coffee page, coffee.com forward slash eSocial. Your support means so much to the channel and to me. You help us keep going. Thank you so much to everyone who is already a member. Okay, let's get into the video. Okay, bye. So <laughs> something has happened recently. I don't know if you've heard. Honestly, it's like really nothing. It's so nothing. It's just, it's honestly just, well, everything's on fire. <laughs> a boycott for Hoyverse is being called for, and there is approximately 200 times more screaming matches happening online more than usual. <laughs> so <laughs> just a normal average day, obviously. I'm so much has happened. I'm exhausted. So if you for sure haven't heard, Genshin Impact just released their trailer for Nutlon, which is the newest region in Tavat's story. It has been rumored that this newest region would be taking inspiration from either Latin American or African countries or Mesoamerican culture. It was kind of in the air, which follows in the Genshin tradition of each region being heavily inspired by or influenced by real life cultures. So... <laughs> So you can imagine everyone's shock and horror and surprise when the Notlon trailer dropped and featured some of the region's newest characters and, well, <laughs> they all looked pretty similar in a certain department, in the skin tone department. So thus, a war of the ages broke out on the internet, with some fans calling for Hoyaverse to diversify their skin tone range so to better accurately represent the people from the cultures they are basing this newest region on, while others either don't care or they call the first people racist for caring so much about skin tone and think that it doesn't matter at all. So, <laughs> does it matter? Why would it matter? And why is everyone so god? damn angry so let's answer these questions okay hey my name is e as in like exhale all right let's breathe in and let's exhale let's settle down and be kind to each other not only be kind to me the youtuber but also to each other in the comment section should you choose to venture down into thus area <laughs> so yes welcome to or welcome back to my channel i'm so happy to see you again also please like and subscribe because and also i stream on twitch twitch.tv forward slash eosocial we have a lot of fun so come on down and say hey without any further ado let's get right into it okay girl Okay, okay, so we have already been here, haven't we? All right, we have already had a region get released that drew heavy inspiration from cultures that featured people that had a wide variety of skin tone. Sumeru, of course, right? Sumeru is a pretty large region on the Tavat map that is home to a lot of different cultural inspirations. The main inspiration stemming from the Middle East with specific nods to Arab and Persian culture, inspiration from India and North African cultures with a lot of Egyptian imagery along with images slash Imitakin culture. So let's play a quick slideshow of some real life people from these regions. All right, amazing, stunning, gorgeous, I love it. All right, now let's play a slideshow of the characters in Genshin that are inspired by these people. Wow. <laughs> let's just say not a spitting image, okay? If you want even more information on the specifics of which characters or parts of Sumeru that are influenced and inspired by these specific cultures, I highly recommend watching Explorer's Compass's videos. They do an amazing job going into all of the details. It is really cool, very awesome to see just how in-depth it gets in the game. So link is in the description to go watch their videos. But I watched as this fell around us on the Twitter timeline when Sumeru dropped in 2022. And honestly, it's just the same thing over again. Unfortunately, people were very angry about Sumeru for like, I think a week or two max, and then didn't really bring it up again. And a lot of other people were saying the phrase, oh, just wait for Notlon, just wait for Notlon, for, you know, like melanated people to actually exist, I guess. So this time with Notlon, 
people had high hopes or just had hope in general that we would get some diversity of skin tone with these new characters and when that didn't happen again the anger this time has been unleashed tenfold or at least it seems like it from my point of view hashtag boycott hoyaverse is trending in video game genres at 17.2 thousand recent posts with that hashtag as of writing this script on the 18th of july 2024 please note as of filming the 23rd of july it is no longer trending <laughs> People are still, people are still talking about it though, trust and believe. Hoyaverse is also trending again at the time of writing the script in the action games category with 38.6 thousand tweets, okay? People are talking to say the least. So why? Why are people so angry, right? Let's unpack what is being said, the meaning behind the terms being used a lot online, and the thought process here, as well as learning about Hoyaverse just as a company, okay? Let's start with history, okay? People are throwing around the term whitewashing. This is whitewashing here and there, and claiming that Hoyaverse is engaging in this with their characters. So let's understand. What does that even mean, girl? Whitewashing, according to Merriam-Webster, is, quote, to alter an original story by casting a white performer in a role based on a non-white person or fictional character. We will 110% be here all day if I go into the intricacies of whitewashing in its extensive past. But one of the most popular modern day examples of whitewashing is M. Night Shyamalan's Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> Shout out to you, I guess thumbs down and our favorite asian american actress scarlett johansson and ghost in the shell as well as jake gyllenhaal as the prince of persia emma stone in that one movie and tom cruise in the last samurai girl <laughs> this is our last samurai this one he's the last one also matt damon in that other movie what is what is Matt Damon doing there? What are you doing there, Matt? Totally off topic, but you could see what I mean. This is just in like the recent decade, pretty much of Hollywood movies that do this stuff. So um, yeah, um, what do these properties have in common? Well, the original source material of these movies feature either a predominantly POC cast or characters that are POC or historical events that are from people of color and <laughs> you know and then the movies happened and suddenly everyone was white so you know girl yeah that's kind of what happens sometimes uh because you know what who gives a f <laughs> where you're from katara okay this girl nicola peltz is just a 10 times better pick than who cares where you're originally from who gives a sh <laughs> she's prettier oh god and then that guy from twilight as Sokka, give me a break okay it happens a lot, as you could tell, just like even in the recent decade. Since, uh, well, in the West, white is often seen as the default. So when people say whitewashing online, they mean this, okay? Now in recent times, and by recent times, I mean like in like the last five years-ish, we have had seemingly progressive movements happen in mainstream media with Ariel from the Little Mermaid live action being cast as a black woman, slay, as well as Annabeth Chase in the Percy Jackson TV show. Uh, this phenomenon is called blackwashing, <laughs> okay? With it basically meaning the same thing as whitewashing, but you know, this time with black people, okay? So pray tell, why is it such a bad thing when a piece of media whitewashes, but it's praised when something else blackwashes. Well, it's because of history. It's because of the past, right? You, you think, think you, you just, just fell out of a coconut, coconut tree? tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. That is such a funny ass video, but was she wrong? She wasn't actually. The past does influence the present, okay? Context plays so much importance in how things are understood. And you would be one dumb mother <laughs> if you say it doesn't, okay? So the past in the West has been whitewashing, okay? <laughs> Girl with blackface at one point being a staple in American entertainment. Avatar The Last Airbender's casting just kind of being a common occurrence. And with the overwhelming majority of A-list celebrities being white. Also, <laughs> you know, segregation happened. <laughs> Civil rights movement, <laughs> racism, you know, you know, just little things, little things over here in good old US of A, all right? <laughs> there is a history to things right? There is a context. <laughs> you know what doesn't have a history? Blackwashing. 
blackwashing does not have a history, okay? There has not been an extensive point in America, for example, where white people have fought for equal rights and when upon having a book written about them had a black person play the role instead of a white person all right that that hasn't happened babes right it's just, it's just not happened it's not in the history books right so that is why people get mad because reinforcing the past is something it's just never something we should aspire to, okay? So keep this in your mind, in your noggin. We will circle back. Okay, 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 okay. I hear you saying right now, hey, A, <laughs> what the fuck does this have to do with Hoyaverse and not Lan, all right? Hoyaverse is a Chinese company and arguably does not have the same history of, let's say, whitewashing and racism like we do in the West, where China is a homogenous state, while the US has like a ton of different people, all right? We're just like our brand. <laughs> I don't know why everyone freaks out in this country when they see someone different from them on the TV. Like that's literally America's brand, but okay, <laughs> I digress. But dear viewer, while the history of whitewashing and or blackwashing is not the main issue in Eastern Asia, another sneakier insidious feminine phenomenon is happening. Colorism. <laughs> Now, what does that mean? What does colorism mean, girl? Colorism was first coined by Alice Walker in her 1983 book titled In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, banger title, by the way, where she defines the term as, quote, prejudicial or preferential treatment of same race people based solely on their color. She coined this term in a discussion about the conflicts that arise within the black community based on how light or how dark a black person's skin color is. This is unfortunately still the case in Eastern Asian countries, especially in countries such as China, Japan, and South Korea, where the beauty standard is very fair skin. This beauty standard has a history in China, where in old and ancient Chinese times, if you were rich enough, you could lay inside all day and slay. But if you were poor, you had to make your living being outside doing manual labor. So the rich became fair skinned and the poor got tanned. So thus, skin color became a symbol of wealth and class. This has carried into the modern day where Ray Chen put in her article that skin bleaching cosmetics is the norm in China. She says, quote, it's tough to go more than two blocks in China without seeing an ad featuring a super fair model promoting products with names like Olay White Radiance, Garnier White Complete, and Pons White Beauty. And in the subtext of each of these ads, the idea that having whiter skin will improve your life is reinforced. She herself is Chinese and very fair skinned and is complimented all the time on it, where one day an older woman saw her and got mad at her for being in the sun without protection and then walked with Chen, holding her arms and hat over Chen's skin to help maintain her beauty. Okay, so I'm telling you this because I need to stress to you all how ingrained this beauty standard is in East Asian society. Look at all of the top models and actresses from China. Look at these ads. Colorism does not just affect foreigners who aren't Chinese, but also affects other Chinese people themselves that don't meet this harsh criteria. Colorism is almost evident in every country around the world, by the way, and it appears and shows up in many different ways. These practices from China specifically showcase how colorism works there. It is so intrinsically a part of beauty and appearance that no, I am not surprised that neither Notlan or Samir characters have a diverse roster of skin colors. Honestly, I'll be real with you guys, I don't know why anyone is super surprised, because why are we in the West so surprised as if Hollywood didn't just kind of stop whitewashing people in movies like all of these movies that happened in the last decade or so okay we're gonna we're gonna flash them again okay why is christian bale why is christian bale in egypt like we are like us in the west hollywood we are just kind of not doing that anymore but that being said this does not excuse anything okay like what if everyone was jumping off a bridge you you think that was okay if everyone was doing it you jump too so now with all of this content Acknowledging the fact that we have not fallen out of a coconut tree, let's take all of this context and now talk about our present situation. So now we return to the traffic upon our stage with 
all of this history behind the fans and the game in Eastern Asia and behind the fans in the West, it is 110,000% understandable why people are upset with the representation or the lack thereof in these games, all right? Objectively, okay? It just does not look good when a gaming company that prides itself on being a global brand seemingly takes everything from a culture to look like they're capitalizing on in their game, but then does not take the people. A great quote from Twitter user Spro's Comics said, quote, going to a country slash culture for inspiration for your game design and seeing all the beautiful things about that culture, then going back to the office and taking all the beautiful materials from that culture and leaving leaving behind the people is flat out wrong. You've completely missed the mark in paying homage to that country. You've actually dishonored those countries, and more importantly, its people. By essentially saying everything about your culture is beautiful and would look great in our game, except you. With the past we have had in the West with representation, how hard fought it was and continues to be, and with the hard to reach beauty standard in the East, it makes sense why people are angry. No, <laughs> it is not racist to call for more diversity in a game that is in the perfect situation to represent real life people through the real life cultures that they take heavy inspiration from. People pulling that one, two online saying, these people who care so much about skin tone and how some characters aren't dark enough are the real racist ones. Why do you care so much about skin tone? They are the exact same crowd that like scream blackwashing when Ariel's a black woman. And they're, they're, it's the same crowd in the whole whitewashing versus blackwashing debate. So again, the answer is the same. There's a history, there's a context to things. You did not, again, just fall out of a coconut tree. And <laughs> unfortunately, the cast of not long that Hoya first put out is repeating that history and it is not setting a new standard at all. They want to be revolutionaries in their field. They're going to have to revolutionize, do new things, not repeat the past. So, so, you know, if you see fans that are POC and they are excitedly looking forward to their favorite game that tells their culture story, but deems that they, the person, isn't good enough to be in their game and they get sad about it. And then you get mad at them for being sad. Um, Two plus two is four and five plus five is 10. That doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense to me. Why are you mad? Why are you mad? But now the other side, the side calling for more representation is not without fault, okay? First, I want to correct some things that I see going around that aren't true. So I just wanna like put that to rest, okay? I see people getting mad that the regions, Mondstadt and Fontaine, for example, are based on one country only, while the regions Sumeru and Natlan are the only ones in Tevat mixing different cultures together. That, that is just like not true, actually. Mondstadt is heavily influenced by Germany, yes, but it is also influenced by a general medieval Europe vibe with some Switzerland and Austria inspirations in Dragonspine, for example. And Fontaine has a lot of French in it, yes, but also has a crap ton of English influences, as well as Welsh and Roman for Remoria, as well as a general European industrial revolution kind of vibe, right? It's a, there's a lot of mixing there as well across Europe. So you could see Mondstadt as the medieval fantasy Europe and Fontaine as the industrial revolution steampunk version of Europe since there is just so much crossover between a lot of the European countries. Liyue, a nation widely known to only take inspiration from China and that's it, actually holds a lot of inspirations from Mongolia, ancient Vietnam, ancient Nanue Kingdom, and the Yue along with other cultures that were eventually absorbed by the Han Empire. Uh, this Liyue knowledge was very kindly given to me from a very slay friend of a friend at Nock Trongli on Twitter. Thank you uh, so much for your sage wisdom. Uh, it was very helpful. Thank you. Additionally, I have seen some internet users pretty upset at Shneznaya for its attempted Slavic representation and have heard that Shneznaya takes inspiration from other Slavic countries such as Poland and Ukraine, for example, and not just from Russia. I saw some French people who were pretty irritated or like weirded out by Fontaine. And I'm also again seeing Slavic people mad about Sneznaya. So they don't just piss off melanated people, okay? They piss off everybody. <laughs>
So all in all, the sentiment that all the other regions that aren't Tamer or Nalan only take inspiration from one country is just not correct. I wanted that to be clear. I wanted to set that straight, okay? There seems to be a hodgepodge happening in each region and they take enough creative liberty with their inspirations in each region that people are offended or upset by each one. But again, I'm not done talking. Dear viewer, one more time, I'm saying hello to you again. It must be noted that the countries that are being pulled from for Lille, for example, are all countries or cultures that were very close to each other, geographically speaking, and thus have quite a few similarities just due to the nature of proximity and how cultures and countries share with each other a lot as they are coming into being, okay? Not long, so far, as of July 23rd, 2024, as far as we know, seems to be taking inspiration from countries in the Ring of Fire. With heavy inspiration already from Incan and Mayan cultures, for example, that uh, were found in modern day Latin America, as well as some references to Yoruban deities that are found in Nigeria, in Africa, and well, um, some Polynesian cultures as well. So, <laughs> Africa in Latin America as continent? You can see how this anger of hodgepodge culture still stands because the cultures being pulled from Fort Notland, for example, are wildly different and are wildly far apart. So then that leaves people to ask the question, why are we grouping these cultures up? Is it because of the color of their skin? Is, is that why? Additionally, I know some try not to, but a lot of noise <laughs> is being created by people who honestly shouldn't be as loud as they are, okay? Getting insanely rabidly mad for minorities and then speaking over them is super cringe. Like that is just really cringe, man, okay? For example, when Sumeru came out, all I heard was outrage and anger and how horribly stereotypical they made Nilu, for example. But I did not hear the Persian voices that were being shouted over that were saying, hey, this is actually really cool. <laughs> This is beautiful. And that's not stereotypical. And and other people were like, oh, you know, this isn't stereotypical. So it's just part of our culture. I don't know what you guys are talking about, okay? These voices that I saw absolutely loved seeing their culture portrayed like this, okay? I put out a community post talking about this issue and I feel like the comments I got on that represent the situation very well, okay? One comment said, sorry, but as a Latino American, this is so stupid. Seeing people desperately wanting the characters to be black just because they took inspiration for my culture is so racist. Like there's white people here too. I think what matters most is the correct representation of my culture as in landscapes, food, clothes, etc. I don't know. To me, this is more like gringos blowing things out of proportion and telling me what my culture should look like. Uh, let me pop in here real fast. Um, so we do agree that there is a diverse range of skin tone present in Latin American cultures. You said that yourself. There are even white people here as well. Agreed. I don't think anyone is saying otherwise. The main issue is that, yes, so there is a diverse range of skin tones. We should have that we should have a diverse range then <laughs> not just one we should have a diverse range then that's that's the argument so i just wanted to pop in here real fast another comment said i'm maori and it's really disappointing to see hoivers make mawika well not maori at all another comment said as a latino myself a skin color doesn't represent a latino but what really represents us is our language and our food not skin. Another comment said, as someone from Peru, I'm very disappointed by the practices carried out by the company, but sadly many here do not care. Another comment said, stop forcing me to have melanin. <laughs> A user from Brazil expressed their disappointment and said that their friend from Candomblé was also pretty upset. So, obviously, as you can tell, there is a lot of different opinions from people who are actually being represented. Because, of course, in Latin America, there is a lot of diversity, so opinions will not reflect each other. The difference in opinion from 
everyone with a device can give you whiplash, right? You have a thread on one side yelling for a boycott to end this game and its racism. You have another thread on how the woke left is a bunch of softies. Then you have another thread on people who are being represented expressing how disappointed they are, while others are angry at everyone else being angry and that they are hype as hell that they're even being mentioned, you know? It's up and then it's down and then it's up and then it's out down again and it's like, whoa, what the, what are we, who, who do we believe? You know, like what, what is happening, you know? So uh, with all of that, what are you supposed to think? That is not my job. <laughs> Don't ask me to tell you that. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna tell you what you should think, okay? I'm here to provide history, research, evidence, and all sides of the argument with my own opinion at the end, with my own argument, but it should, does not have to be yours, right? Some may agree with me, others won't. That's a good thing, honestly. The situation is complicated enough that it is important to take in everything to then make your own opinion. Admittedly, I've also been a bit biased in this video so far, I'm pretty sure you can tell, but I still hope I presented everything to you as well as I could. So, what is, what is little old me's opinion, you're asking? Well, um, as a mixed Puerto Rican gal, who has longed to see people like me in media I consume since I was a little girl, I am here to state that I am disappointed, okay? I'm not surprised though, okay? Not even a little, actually. I was surprised to see Janssen in the trailer, who was visibly darker than the other characters because honestly, I truly didn't even expect one character to be darker than slightly tan. So I, maybe I'm too optimistic, but I see Janssen as a win and a hope for mayhaps more to come, all right? Because we're not gonna erase Janssen. Janssen is considerably uh, more melanated, so I don't want us to forget about Janssen at all in this discussion, okay? But of course, as a Hoyaverse fan, I am disappointed. I am. I, and again, my opinion, um, I do not believe Hoyaverse is racist, okay? I do believe sometimes their actions and decisions may be fueled by centuries of colorism and racist ideologies. I do believe that they can accidentally be racist. I do not think that when creating these characters and games that they had hatred on their to-do list. And I don't believe that any of this was done with maliciousness, okay? You can absolutely disagree with me, but that's just my opinion from where I'm seeing everything, okay? Part of the reason I say this and I believe this is that the amount of research and love they put into creating these worlds and lore based on so many different cultures, I think is incredible. I have learned and been exposed to so many different kinds of cultures because of Genshin. Different names, different foods, different myths than my own. I, I have learned about historical figures. I have learned about famous monuments and architecture types, okay? I have seen so many people who had one of their cultures inspire some of the things in Genshin Impact and I see them get hype as hell. I love seeing that joy. Some loving Nilu's dance, loving hearing the names of the characters in Sumeru and Natlan and being like, oh, that's my culture, yeah, let's go. I genuinely believe that it's beautiful and something that is truly so, 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 so cool. And I don't think we should just forget that this game does that. It is still though disappointing and 100% a bad look for a global game to be so detailed about their research of these cultures that inspire their game, but fail to bring the people in it. That's what's so frustrating to me. Like, imagine you see your culture inspire your favorite game, then other characters look like you. Like you've, like you've never, like you've never seen your culture be in some mainstream popular global story. You've never seen it before. And then you do, and you're like, oh, this is so hype. Oh my God, yes, more people look at my beautiful culture. But well, then you're not there. Or people that look like you or your auntie or anything. For me, from my personal experience, growing up, if I had more stories that featured people that looked like me with my hair and body type, maybe loving myself would have come easier, you know? Cause I'm, I, I didn't see a lot of people like me around me, you know? No, I'm mixed, I have a certain type of hair type. It took me until I was in college, so until I was like 19 years old, uh, until I actually met someone who could help teach me how to take care of my hair. As you could tell, I'm not doing a good job with it, by the way. <laughs> 
And as you could tell, she's a little fried. Yeah, so representation means a lot to me, right? There was a lot of good Notland could have done by having a more diverse range of skin tones and hair types. A lot of young people could have seen themselves in the game and just be so happy by it, right? So growing, again, another tidbit growing up, I never had a Disney princess that I could dress as because I was like, okay, I guess I'll be Belle because we both have brown hair. Never had a Disney princess, by the way, like ever, ever. Uh, so 2021, when I was probably like 20 years old, Encanto came out and for the first time ever, I looked at a character and I was like, that's, that's me. I don't look like her as much anymore, but Mirabelle, at the time when I, my hair was not colored and it was cut short, that was me. What could have been, eh? But with all of that emotion and feeling and context and history and all that stuff, do I think you should stop playing the game? Do I think you are racist for still playing the game? Are you racist for caring so much about the character's skin tone? No, no, and no, weirdo, okay? At the end of the day, don't get your panties in a twist when I say this, okay? It is just a game, okay? It is just a game. It's not real. Okay, and it's a beautiful game that tells amazing stories that drops the ball hard sometimes, okay? It's a game that's supposed to be fun and make you happy. If it isn't doing that, if no games you play are doing that, drop them. Stop playing them, you know? If you feel this passion, if seeing this really ignited something in you, well, there are a ton of other causes out there that deserve and that would need and that would want your time and attention more than, you know, giving it to a video game, right? But if you are so passionate, so passionate about this issue in a video game and then find no interest or kind of like turn your head away from helping to fight inequality in real life, that kind of makes me question where you actually stand and what you're actually mad about. That also being said, okay, do I think it was a waste of time to get angry over the Notlon characters? No, girl, I don't. As I talked about before, representation means a lot to me. As you can see with what I said and also with this entire channel. I don't think personally Hoyaverse will change the characters, but by making as much noise as we did, I do think that we caused some good in the world because there might be a ton of people out there who were never exposed to these sort of issues or had no idea this was like a big deal, all right? Everyone getting angry and explaining why this was such a bad decision from Hoyaverse, the history behind it, the, the nuances behind it probably taught and educated a ton of people who now know better and who can now point out when things like this happen as well. I think this was an amazing teaching opportunity. And I see that, honestly, maybe I'm too optimistic. I see that as an overall good, okay? Not a waste of time to get angry over something you care about at all. But it's also not worth it to yell at people who still play the game and call them racist or something. Again, other things you could be channeling that passion into if you do care that strongly about matters such as these, okay? So all that being said, keep speaking your mind. Keep making noise, girl. Do what feels right with you and your soul, okay? Don't push others out, okay? When POC are expressing their opinions, it is always better to listen and educate yourself first. So, heavier topic aside, let me know what you think. Do you agree with my sentiments or do you just straight up disagree with whatever part it was? Let me know, okay? I would love to hear it. Comment down below. This can be a very interesting, important, engaging conversation. If, you know, no one starts yelling at each other and if we're pretty civil about it and calm about it, then yes, let's go off. So please like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe. Uh, it really does help out the channel a whole ton. And let me know what you would like me to talk about next we also stream on twitch.tv forward slash e is social so come hang out we'll be playing uh, a lot of fun games together and of course a very special divalicious thank you to alienize jonah luel kaya luindril joanne aike moon blue x crystal summers Blue Ink Alchemist, Pauline, and S, aka Shalami, I believe, for supporting the channel on our coffee page. Your guys' support means the world to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you, for real. You too can get a shout out at the end of each video, as well as a chance to see videos early. If you become a member on the coffee at coffee.com forward slash E is social, link is also below. Thank you so much for watching. And if I don't see you on Twitch, then I'll see you in the next one, okay? Oh,